It's not a Barbie outfit, I promise. I know you guys are gonna send me a million emails about this. I ordered it before the Barbie movie even came out, before the Barbie movie was a thing. It's a coincidence that it's pink. A coincidence. You believe in coincidences. <laughs> I have a confession to make. Today was the first day that I ever wished that Hillary Clinton was president. And I truly did. I sat, I was sitting at my computer earlier today and I thought, man, I wish Hillary Clinton were president today. And let me tell you why I wish that Hillary Clinton were president today. Because Hillary Clinton sent out a tweet. It is the most epic tweet on Twitter. I think it is, it is, it is certainly one this week on Twitter. Let's bring this up on the screen so everyone can see this tweet. It's an experience in and of itself. Hillary Clinton tweeted, hot enough for you? Thank a mega Republican. Or better yet, vote them out of office. She accompanied this tweet, as you can see, with a bunch of headlines that say, Phoenix hits record for 19th day of 110 plus degrees in a row with more ahead. A headline from CNN that says, 39 day heat wave could last into August after smashing 2,300 plus records, et cetera, et cetera. Hot enough for you, Hillary Clinton says in response, thank a mega Republican or better yet, vote them out of office. I read this and I thought, I wish Hillary Clinton were president right now. I wish more than anything else that Hillary Clinton were in the Oval Office because remember that scene from the proposal? And I was gonna show this scene on the show, but you know, there's copyright issues and we're not allowed to show it. So I'm still going to describe it to you because I desperately wanted to play this. Remember in the proposal when Betty White was doing the rain dance in, or the weather dance, or thanking the Mother Earth, and she was dressed up like some kind of Native American. I thought to myself, if Hillary Clinton were in office, she would have to call Elizabeth Warren into the White House to do a rain dance, to change this weather, since Hillary Clinton clearly believes in superstitious paganism. She clearly thinks that individual people can control the weather. This is bananas but I would do anything to see Hillary Clinton try to change the weather, especially if she teamed up with Elizabeth Warren to do it. <laughs> She's also a liar, by the way. This is, I suppose, a secondary point because the Betty White rain dance point is better. But the actual weather stats, let me bring this up on the screen as well. We're not having any kind of unprecedented heat. It's the summer, it's hot in the summer, but this is what Steve Malloy tweeted earlier. He said, crooked Hillary Clinton blames mega Republicans for hot weather, but even the EPA admits that heat waves have dramatically declined since the 1930s. He posted a graphic of this, you can see this. He said, June was not the hottest month on the satellite record, June 1998 was. He said, he also posted figures of all of this. I'm gonna show these on the screen as we go through this. It'll just take a second. Phoenix has not broken any temperature records from weather alone. He said, July 4th was not the hottest day in 100,000 years. And then he said, mega Republican driven warming is a hoax, obviously. I don't even know if anybody falls for this anymore. I'm just always struck by this idea that the left thinks that they can control weather or the left thinks that we control weather. Like this is this is something from a, privit a primitive civilization where they believe that like sacrificing human beings would, would be good for their crops or something like this. This is what Hillary Clinton is talking about. We also, just for the record, have no idea what the temperature was 100,000 years ago. The scientists that speculate on this are doing exactly that, they're speculating. They might, might, might be extrapolating some data, but we don't have recorded temperatures from 100,000 years ago. It's models that scientists built, models very similar to the models that predicted how many COVID deaths we would suffer, the models that were entirely wrong, the same models that told us that by the year 2000, we'd have a climate catastrophe, also wrong. They're the ones that are making stuff up, to use a polite phrase, making stuff up. And Hillary Clinton is trying to blame mega Republicans. The funniest, most bananas tweet of the day. A tragic story that you probably heard about, LeBron James's son, Bronny James, he's an 18 year old young man, suffered cardiac arrest while practicing basketball at the University of Southern California. And we're gonna break this entire, this entire story down because there's a lot of speculation about, well, what caused this cardiac arrest? A lot of people have opinions about what they think might have caused it. And it's worth discussing. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. But first I wanna talk to you about Genucel. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the mirror. Do you see those dark spots? Well, they're not going away on their own. So I want to introduce you the dark spot corrector from Genucel right in time for the summer. The dark spot corrector with not one, 
but three cutting edge ingredients goes to work fast to target sunspots, dark spots, liver spots, even old discoloration, both on your face and on your hands. You will be amazed at how quickly you'll see results. You can now enjoy your summer sun. You can enjoy the beach and barbecues without embarrassing spots. With Genucel, you'll see results or your money back, no questions asked. So go to genucel.com slash Liz right now. Get your dark spot corrector with the new Genucel Most Popular Package. It now features summer essentials like the best-selling Ultra Retinol Moisturizer with a powerful retinol alternative that is safe for use in the summer sun. Visit genucel.com slash Liz right now, and these amazing summer essentials are 70% off if you buy Genucel's most popular package. So don't wait. Order Genucel's most popular package now. 70% off if you visit my URL, genucel.com slash Liz. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash Liz. Genucel.com slash Liz. So LeBron James's son, his name is Bronny. He, to the surprise of no one, is a basketball phenom like his father. He's 18 years old. He's a, an incoming freshman at USC. He's supposed to play basketball there, obviously. He was working out at USC's gym, and he had a terrible, tragic thing happen. He suffered cardiac arrest. This, and there's tons of speculation about what caused this, and I think, it's, I think it's valid speculation. There's been a lot of pushback, from certainly from the left, and even some people on the right saying we shouldn't speculate about what might have happened to this 18-year-old, otherwise healthy, elite athlete who suffered a heart attack a teenager suffered a heart attack and we shouldn't speculate about what happened. And I want to address that specifically because um, the, uh, uh, the particular claim that I find to be, well, infuriating is that it's irresponsible for us to speculate. And that's entirely wrong. So let's talk about exactly what happened and what we know and why it's not just okay and perfectly responsible to talk about this by what, by, but the fact that it's a public service to do so. This is what his family said in a statement. They said, yesterday while practicing, Bronny James suffered a cardiac arrest. Medical staff was able to treat Bronny and take him to the hospital. He is now in stable condition and no longer in ICU. We ask for respect and privacy for the James family, and we will update media when there is more information. LeBron and Savannah wish to publicly send their deepest thanks and appreciation to the USC medical and athletic staff for their incredible work and dedication to the safety of their athletes. I can't imagine actually as a parent how awful they must, what, what, what an awful time their family must be having. This is, a, this is a tragedy regardless of what caused it. And I think it's important that we all establish that from the outset that you can, I mean, my heart aches to think of a mother of a teenage son, like experiencing her son almost dying, cardiac arrest. This is gonna have repercussions for the rest of his life. But people are obviously questioning, what is this from? An 18-year-old boy, an elite athlete who has access to all the medical care in the world that he needs, his father is you know, one of the best NBA basketball players of all time. What happened? What happened? The other reason, so one of the, one of the reasons that young men can have cardiac arrest or suffer cardiac arrest is if they overdose on drugs. That seems pretty unlikely that this would be drug related since he was performing at an elite level. You'd think that that would be something that would be evident in his appearance, in his performance, if he were a drug addict, but it's possible. It's not impossible. He also could have an undiagnosed heart defect. We know that this does happen across the country uh, a handful of times every year where usually pretty amateur high school athletes, usually teenage boys, um, die unexpectedly based on an undiagnosed heart defect. That could be the case. I personally find that to be very unlikely given the fact that Bronny James had access to all the medical care that he could ever need in high school through his father at college. You'd think that he would have been screened for something like that. It's possible. It's not impossible. Doesn't seem likely to me. He could have suffered from commotia cordis. That is uh, the rare occurrence that's it's an electrical issue with the heart where if you get if you uh, have impact on your chest wall at just the right moment in in the beat of a heart that it can cause your heart to go into cardiac arrest that happens almost never and even though it is the prevailing narrative from the left on Twitter it's almost certainly not the case this is exactly what they said about Demar Hamlin too exactly what they said it's almost certainly not the case. So there we have the entertainment of of many different issues. Could it be something even more obscure than that? It could, but if we're playing the game of percentages here, I think we all have a pretty good idea of the most likely cause of this. Now, are we ever going to know for a fact? Probably not. LeBron James is pretty far left. I mean, he couldn't even bring himself to condemn China, communist China, for goodness sake. He's not gonna go against the entire Democrat party 
on the COVID vax. Are we ever really going to know? Probably not. But what we do know for a fact are these studies. I'd like to show this. This is element number five. It says, heart attack, this is the title of it, heart attack deaths jumped sharply among U.S. adults in the second year of the COVID pandemic. Now, the headline itself is kind of funny because they say in the second year of the COVID pandemic, well, what happened in the second year? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't some difference in COVID. How come heart attacks didn't jump in the first year of COVID? This brings me back to... Um, This brings me back to the question about whether or not it's irresponsible of us to speculate without having seen Bronnie James's medical records, without having known if he's vaxxed or not against COVID. Is it irresponsible for us to ask this question, to speculate about what we in our guts think probably caused this heart attack in this teenage boy? We're going to talk about that in just a second, but first I want to talk to you about American Heart for Gold. Is it only me or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain to you as well? At every turn, we're getting less, even though we're spending more, because we're facing record high inflation, soaring interest rates. It feels like we are facing a recession, and it, of course, threatens our businesses, our jobs, our retirement funds, our money. Even Fed Chair Powell warned us to brace for more pain. That's not what I like to hear. That's not what I like to hear when I'm supporting a young family. Fortunately, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg, even in the face of this uncertainty. You can do what I did. You can call the only precious metals dealer that I trust, American Hartford Gold. They make it simple. It's easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one short phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. If you call them right now, they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 866 781-7499. That's 866-781-7499. Or text Liz to 65532. Again, the phone number is 866-781-7499. Or if you prefer text messaging, text Liz to 65532. Asking questions isn't irresponsible. It's a public service. This has been the response. I know Brad Palumbo is a libertarian. I don't know him in person. I'm sure he's a nice person, but this is completely wrongheaded to suggest that we shouldn't speculate about this. What do we care more about? Do we care more about a comment on Twitter or do we care more about the lives of these young men? Think about Bronny James. What is it? What was his life yesterday? What was he looking forward to in his life? He was looking forward to playing in college, playing basketball in college, which his entire life has been dedicated to the formation of him as a basketball player to play in college and hopefully play in the NBA. He was going to go to college. He was going to then be drafted into the NBA. He was potentially going to be able to make his living playing professional basketball, maybe even with his father, which would be a legacy to remember. And now what? Now what does his life look like? Now what is his future? He doesn't know. Is he going to die sooner because of what happened to his heart? Is he going to die tomorrow? Is he going to die 10 years from now when he's 40? What, what's going to happen? Is he going to be able to play professional sports or is that too taxing on a heart that stopped? I care about people like Bronny James more than I care that the sensibilities of someone like Brad Palumbo were offended. I don't care if my question seems vulgar I don't care. It's not vulgar. It's blunt. I don't care if my question makes people uncomfortable. If we don't ask these questions, then what's going to happen? If we don't ask these questions, then Big Pharma is going to get away with this. The only reason they've been able to propagate what is happening to our country to the extent that they have is because Big Pharma is in bed with big government. The regulators in the agencies, in the administrative state, in the federal government of the United States who approve products don't actually care about the studies. They don't care about that because they're just trying to make money. So no, it's not irresponsible to ask the question. We should be asking these questions. And if other people are uncomfortable asking the questions, I'm happy to do it. But I suspect the majority of people who are watching this show today are thinking the exact same thing that I'm thinking. By the way, he's not the only one. Ronnie James, Damar Hamlin, they're not the only ones. In this week alone, Uh, singer Tori Kelly. She's 30 years old. She was rushed to the hospital after collapsing and doctors are now treating her for blood clots. A 30-year-old young woman. We don't know. It could be multiple things. Could be maybe she's on the birth control bill. That causes blood clots. Maybe she's taking some kind of drugs. It could be. Could be any of those things. But you have to wonder when it all happens in a week. The sportscaster, Shaka Hislop, 
Watch this video if you can. This is a really difficult video to watch. He collapses while commentating a sports game on air. Watch this. From VSG, he's not gone on the tour of Japan. What have you missed? What have you seen? Shaq! Shaq! And he just falls on his face to the ground. Oh. Okay. It's the most horrendous thing. The most horrendous thing. All in the space of one week. So yeah, sometimes young athletes die of other causes. But are we not willing as a society to detect a pattern and to put a stop to it? Do we care that little about human life that, we're, that we'd rather be comfortable not going against the grain? I'm very grateful that you and I feel called and responsible for pushing back on this and demanding accountability for the sake of these people who never wanted to be and never should have been headlines in this way. So I know I said I did not intend to wear this outfit in the sense that I wasn't trying to wear a Barbie outfit and I stand by that. I ordered this, I promise I ordered this. Before the Barbie movie became a, a phenomenon, before everyone was dressing up in pink, I promise. I do have a post Barbie news flash for women across the country. And we're gonna get to that in one second, but first I wanna talk to you about fresh pressed olive oil. The most delicious olive oil you'll ever taste is fresh from the farm. That's when olive oil is at its peak of both flavor and nutritional goodness. Supermarket olive oils, on the other hand, can't compare because they sit on the shelf for months on end. They grow stale, which I find to be pretty gross. That's why I get my olive oil direct from small, award-winning family farms, thanks to a fellow named TJ Robinson. He's also known as the olive oil hunter. TJ's farm fresh oils are vibrant, grassy, incredibly delicious on salads and bread, veggies and pasta, meat and fish, even desserts. My mouth is watering just thinking about this feast. To let you taste the difference that freshness makes, TJ will send you a full-size bottle, normally $39, free, if you pay just $1 to help cover shipping. This is how he introduces people to his fresh-pressed olive oil club. Just $1 for shipping, the free bottle is yours, and there's no commitment, don't worry, no commitment to buy anything now or ever. To get your free bottle and taste the difference that freshness makes, go to farmfresh123.com. That's farmfresh123.com farmfresh123.com. So post Barbie news flash, I think we can all agree that Barbie was a pretty woke film. It's pretty derogatory to the traditional role that women have played in the family and society. Pretty derogatory towards young girls who like to play with dolls. Pretty derogatory towards pregnant women. You know the role, you probably watched it. If you didn't, you saw somebody else who watched it, posting about it, ranting online. But this is what I would just, I, I would just like to take a moment and remind our country to be sane. Remind our country of the insanity that the left is constantly throwing our way. Being a woman is amazing. We as women are not victims, even if Barbie land Barbies think they are. We're, we're not victim, we're not controlled and oppressed by the patriarchy, we're not. Women are different than men. And that's okay. In fact, you could argue that it's misogynistic to tell women that to live up to their full potential, they have to pretend to be men instead of being themselves as women. Men and women are intended to complement each other. Our differences are not supposed to be in competition with each other. They're supposed to bring us together, to make us better. Being a woman is a beautiful thing. And it's the most amazing, fulfilling, miraculous thing in the world to be a mother to your own sweet babies. Feminism that contradicts that and tells you lies and wants you to think that you're a victim is trash. It's a lie. And don't let the Barbie movie brainwash you or pollute your mind. In fact, there was a poll done in 2020. This was a poll done of women regarding their satisfaction with their lives. And this is what it found. It compared childless women to mothers, to married mothers, to unmarried mothers. And what it found is that the happiest women of all are married mothers. And it's not even close. 
not even close by a huge margin, married women who are mothers are the happiest. Look at that right column. Completely satisfied. 38.52% of married mothers say they are completely satisfied. 45% say they are somewhat satisfied. That's not even close. Childless women, only 12% say they are completely satisfied. That's less than half. That's like a third. The happiest women of all are married women who are mothers. And Barbie might be telling you lies, but they're lies. They're not true, not true at all. So Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy says that all of the scandal that's happening regarding Hunter Biden and his business dealings and whether or not Joe Biden was involved, or at this point, I guess the question isn't whether or not Joe was involved, it's how Joe was involved. Speaker McCarthy says that this investigation is now rising to the point of an impeachment inquiry in the United States Congress. Take a listen to this. So not only do they claim that they were bribed, we now find information that 16 out of 17 payments from Romania were provided to the Biden shell companies while he was vice president. When President Biden was running for office, he told the American public that he's never talked about business. He said his family has never received a dollar from China, which we now prove is not true. We now have some of the most credible whistleblowers. These 10-year IRS agents who have come forward said that the Biden family has been treated differently, that what Weiss has told us is different than what Garland and Weiss has told the public. And you're sitting here today where now you have found millions of foreign money, just what the 1023 alleges they did to Biden's family. Now we found that it has funneled through shell companies. If you're sitting in our position today, we would know none of this if Republicans had not taken the majority. We've only followed where the information has taken us. But... Hannity, this is rising to the level of impeachment inquiry, which provides Congress the strongest power to get the rest of the knowledge and information needed. Because this president has also used something we have not seen since Richard Nixon, used the weaponization of government to benefit his family and deny Congress the ability to have the oversight. The Biden family runs, if they say, a company but never had an office and shell companies to be able to pay through. But if they really ran it for foreign countries, why didn't you get money from France, from Germany, from UK? Why does it have to be from China, Romania, um, in these countries that have real challenges and had problems going through? I believe we will follow this all the way to the end, and this is going to rise to an impeachment inquiry the way the Constitution tells us to do this, and we have to get the answers to these questions. All the while, Joe Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, she finally changed the verbiage that the White House is using to deny Joe's involvement in Hunter's business dealings, but this change did not go unnoticed. This is a pretty significant change in language to use for this denial. This is what Karine Jean-Pierre said this week about Joe and Hunter. Uh, Chairman James Comer today says that the oversight committee, excuse me, has evidence that the president in the past communicated directly with foreign business associates of his son Hunter Biden many times curious if the White House and the president still stand behind his comment that he's never been involved and has never even uh, spoken to his son about his So I've been I've been asked this question a million times. The answer is not going to change. The answer remains the same. The president was never in business with his son. I just don't have anything else to add. Oh, the president was never in business with his son. He was never in business with his son. I don't know about you, but when I heard that, I was like, oh, the White House is scared. Joe Biden is scared because they changed their denial. This is the denial that Joe Biden was issuing, well, in the past couple of years. I mean, this started back on the campaign trail when he was running against Trump. This has been the narrative that Joe Biden has used up until Karine Jean-Pierre changed it just this week. Take a listen to Biden himself. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. 
Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. Do you stand by your statement that you did not discuss any of your son's overseas business yes, dealings? Yes, I stand him? by that statement. That was in 2019. A lot's changed, I guess, in the space of four years or almost four years. This, this of course, is all developing as Devin Archer. Devin Archer is the former business partner of Hunter Biden, who ran these schemes with Hunter. Devin Archer is scheduled to give his testimony to Congress, and he's going to rat out Hunter Biden, reportedly. Reportedly, Devin Archer is set to tell Congress under oath that Hunter Biden put Joe Biden on speakerphone while Hunter Biden was in business meetings two dozen different times. This is bombshell testimony. If this hearing that's been scheduled and then canceled and then rescheduled actually happens, this would prove the president of the United States not only to be a liar, we know that Joe Biden has lied about a whole bunch of things, but it would prove that Joe Biden was involved in corrupt pay-to-play schemes, bribery schemes, where foreign nations that are hostile to us were paying for access to the vice president of the United States or the president of the United States. You bet that rises to the level of an impeachment inquiry. I, I'm, I've never been about impeachment tit for tat. I knew this would happen after the Democrats impeached Trump twice. I thought at the time, I probably said this on the show at the time, I thought, well, now we're gonna have a situation where every single president is going to be impeached when the House of Representatives is controlled by the opposing party. It's gonna happen every single time. I don't think that's what this is though. This is, both Trump impeachments were completely illegitimate. And the first one was based on a lie that Trump was a Russian agent that was absolutely debunked. The second one was based on the disgruntled employee at the White House who disagreed with Trump's policy towards Ukraine both of them completely farce. But this, this Biden impeachment is real. This man shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the White House if he cares so little for the United States and for our safety and security that he would actually work with his son on these corrupt deals where Hunter was getting paid by dangerous people in dangerous countries to get access to first the Obama White House and now the Biden White House. It's horrendous, horrendous stuff. Okay, we have time for one more cool thing. This is a video that my producers picked that I have not yet watched. Let's watch it together. What is this? I know this is a, is a very difficult time, but if you could say something to Janelle right now, what would it be? Um, that we miss you and we're looking for you. And Steffi P from biology is pregnant. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, she says that she's not, but she's like totally wearing sweaters in May. Uh, tell so us how you've I don't even know what that was. <laughs> they do this to me every time. My control room is cracking up. Apparently this is about a girl who'd been missing for six days. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even, I have to watch videos like this like three or four times before I can laugh as hard as Rebecca is laughing right now. I can see her laughing her head off. All right, guys, if you haven't. I know this is a, Okay, this play is a it for me again. difficult time, but if you could say something to Janelle right now, what would it be? Um, that we miss you. And we're looking for you. And Steffi P from biology is pregnant. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, she says that she's not, but she's like totally wearing sweaters in May. Oh, oh they think she's pregnant. <laughs> she's wearing sweaters. Do we have the conclusion of that story? What happened? Was she? I don't It seems, it seems bad to, to laugh at this. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't already pre-ordered my book, go to hideyourchildrenbook.com. Get your copy of Hide Your Children, Exposing the Marxists Behind the Attack on America's Kids. It comes out really soon. We're going to have a special all about it coming up for you pretty soon. Pretty soon. Go to hideyourchildrenbook.com and place your pre-order now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. Ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.